Hello, it's good to be here. Uh, thank you for um, being here with me. I um, This is a little bit different than what we've been doing uh, for the last couple of week, weeks, or I guess what Robert has been doing for the most of it. Um, but I, I wanted to take this time to just talk a little bit and talk a little bit about what's going on and a little bit about what I'm thinking about, what um, probably a lot of you are thinking about, and um, just sharing a little bit. I actually uh, got a call from my dad earlier this week and um, it was really actually pretty cool because he had just called my aunt and talked to her and they hadn't talked in a while. And um, he was telling me that he had been thinking about um, all of these different songs that he heard when he was, you know, a kid and, you know, asked me, you remember the song, I'm your puppet and all these. It was so cute, like all the things he was thinking about and. It just, you know, at, at the time I was kind of a little bit feeling a little bit busy, but I, in my mind, I just thought, you know what, I need to stop and appreciate this moment with my dad that he's calling me to share like what, what he's thinking about and how grateful he is for times with our family and times with me and songs that remain, reminded him of different situations and you know, I started just thinking about um, my own life and how God has worked in my life. And, you know, it, it, uh, it's funny, memory is a, a, um, a tricky thing sometimes because sometimes we can remember our life and all we're focused on are all the negative things or all the hard things. And, and not that those things are never to be thought of or that we shouldn't work through them, but sometimes our memory is, is selective and sometimes it's settled on things that aren't so helpful. But I started thinking about how God has worked in my life. Well, always, of course, he created me, but some really specific times that I remember him working, um, you know, in our family, my family, um, we didn't go to church. I mean, we, I don't remember ever going to church with my parents or my grandparents. Um, I know when they were younger, they went to church, but um, I didn't grow up hearing stories about Jesus or um, singing songs, um, Christian songs, or, um, reading the Bible at all, or really even knowing the difference between God and Jesus. I really didn't know um, anything about, about Christianity. And, but I do remember some very clear moments where God reached out to me. And um, it made me think of this scripture in Acts uh, chapter 17 and verse starting in verse 24. It says, the God who made the world and everything in it is Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else from all men. Um, I'm um, from one man, he made all the all the earth, all the nations, that they would inhabit the whole earth. And he marked their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. From in for in him we live and move and have our being, as some um, of our poets have said. You know, I think that when I look at this scripture and I think, okay, here here's God reaching out to us. Um, he says that he. Uh, it says from one man he made um, all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he he marked their appointed time in history, which um, the version I had before said it a little bit different. So this puts a, a different light on it. He marked 
their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. Um, that's very interesting that he put us in the, in the places and times that he chose to put us. It says that God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Um, and it, it makes me think here, you know, when I was a little girl, not going to church, not knowing God, not knowing God was even looking for me. And, um, and yet I can look back and see times where, um, you know, like uh, my third grade teacher, who his name was Mr. Martinez, and he he would he was very different. He was very kind. He was very caring with the students. He had a relationship with pretty much all of us. You know, he really spent time thinking about us. And I remember he and his family used to come and pick me up and take me to church. Uh, that's pretty amazing, you know, that he would think to um, talk to my parents, ask if I can go with him and his family to church, and then take me to church to teach me about Jesus. And um, I just remember going to the children's ministry and learning things I'd never heard about Jesus. It was really pretty amazing that he did that. Um, and then in the fifth grade, I remember having a teacher, Miss DeMann, um, and um, she was such a great teacher. She was uh, really involved in our lives, like helping us. And I remember at the time we were a new class and in that class, there was this one kid who really did not get along with anybody. I think every day he got in a fight. He was throwing kids on top of kids. He was really, he was out of control. He was kind of mean. But um, I remember her really taking time to talk with him, to help him, to talk to his parents, to help us to be friends with him. And I, I remember knowing she was a Christian and thinking, people who are Christians are really different. Um, people who who follow Jesus are really different than the average people. And I was really just inspired by that. Um you know, um, there's just been so many ways that God has has called out to me. In the, in the eighth grade, I had a friend who, um, she, she was my age, but her family went to church every Sunday, and she knew a lot about the Bible. And, you know, in the summertime, we would all play outside and hang out with all our friends in the neighborhood. And I remember this one time we were playing outside, we were playing baseball or something out there, and and it got dark, and so of course you can't see the ball anymore, so we all were sitting down on the sidewalk and the curb, and um, she started telling us the story of the cross and how Jesus came to this earth, some of the things he said, um, that he came to pay the price for us, that he he lived this life and then died on a cross for us and then rose from the dead. I mean, she told us the whole story. And I still remember it was such a amazing story to me. It really impacted me that Jesus would die for me. I don't know if I had even realized that, that I had even known that. And, you know, there's other times where I think of spending the night outside with my friend. We used to spend the night in the backyard every night in the summer and look at the stars and talk about God. And, you know, I love that scripture. Um, I think it's in Isaiah. Uh, I have it here somewhere. Um, Isaiah 26. No, 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 no. That's not it. Psalm 19, 1. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. I mean, that to me is so true that um, the heavens proclaim God. Um, if you if you don't know a lot about God, you look up in the stars and and you just can't help but have all kinds of, you know, questions and thoughts and time and all the people that have ever, ever lived on this earth. But, you know, God puts those things on our heart and in our mind so that we'll know he wants a relationship with us. There's a reason why we're here. Um, 
that he cares about us. He cares about the details of our lives. And, you know, when I think of all that from the past, you know, when I was a kid, I, you know, I, I, it makes me feel like I want to be really aware of that for my life right now. I want to see all the times that God is calling me, that God is asking me to come read my Bible, to pray, to put on some music, to breathe deeply, to, um, you know, whatever it is, to take some time to be still, to um, meditate on his word. And, you know, but I, I think there's there's going to be times like that. And, and again, not all of them are going to be um, fond memories necessarily. Sometimes we learn about God through hard times. And, you know, I, I guess the thing is, is right now it's absolutely going to be one of the hardest times of our lives. I mean, it's already crazy that so many people are dying from this virus. And um, I think, you know, it's important that we take time outside of all the concerns and worries that we have to really realize God is speaking to us. And, you know, in, in um, Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not Matthew, John, um, where did, John 16, 33, <clears throat> the Bible says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, God does not promise us that life is going to be easy. In fact, he's, Jesus said, in this life, you're going to have trouble, but take heart because I have overcome the world. You know, I think this is, in a lot of ways, a key to how we need to be living right now. It's not that life is so great and grand and we're all running through the fields and flowers and stuff things are hard right now and and particularly for for some extremely extremely hard um but jesus wants us to remember that he's with us that in this in this life we'll have trouble but take heart he's overcome the world um those are comforting words to me. Um, in Isaiah uh, 26, 3, it says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. You know, God is forever uh, our lives here on this earth are are short, but God is forever, and He is our rock. He is where we should go when things are hard. He is um, like fixing our minds and our thoughts on Him, on Jesus, is the answer to get through um, this stuff. And um, John eight twelve, Jesus said, "I am the light of the world." Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You know that even through dark days, even through hard times, we have Jesus. He's the light of the world. And if, you know, it says whoever follows him will never walk in darkness. Even as bad as things feel, as hard as things can be, we don't have to walk in darkness. We can walk with Jesus. Um, Philippians 4, 4 through 7, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, this is a great scripture. Rejoice in the Lord always. This scripture is here for times like this, um, that, 
you know, maybe we're not bouncing off the walls, you know, being stupid when people are suffering, but in our heart of hearts, we can rejoice that God is the eternal rock, that, um, you know, we can pray to him at any time. We, we don't have to make an appointment. We don't have to call him. We can pray to him at any time. Um, we can ask him for peace. We can ask him for help. And so, you know, this is just a, a few things that I've been thinking, and um, I, I hope that they're encouraging to you. I hope that they can help you. Um, one of the things I did want to mention, um, I have been listening to a podcast called Woven in Truth. It's out of San Diego, Woven in Truth. And it. Um, I actually just did a podcast for them, but there's a lot of really amazing women that have done podcasts on this um, podcast on different subjects. Um, but it's really encouraging to see all the different women and their different personalities and lives, and they share about different aspects of the Christian life. So I thought I'd throw that out there. You can find it on Spotify. Um, Woven in Truth is what it's called. So anyway, I'll leave you, and I hope that um, you will be putting your faith and your trust in God and know that He cares about you. Love you.